joining us to talk some who? The great Devon Givens. What's up, baby? No worries, Kelly. Kelly, right? Kelly. Yeah. From, Kelly uh, Body. No worries. It's going to be a good playoff. See, I feel the same way, dude. Yeah. I think of that. I feel the same exact way. Yeah. Now, of course, you have to be concerned. You can't just overlook the fact that you are playing in a do or die situation in the seven, eight matchup. And then if you lose, God forbid, you fall to the Bulls or the Atlanta Hawks in the nine, 10 winner of that one as, as you still have a second chance. But they, they are, as long as MB can play and they have to pay attention to them, they are still the better basketball team. So Kelly, don't worry, enjoy it. It should be, should be something that, that's fun. It's playoff time. You know how that building gets. You know how the fans are going to back the Philadelphia 76ers on their home floor. We'll talk about the matchups. We'll get into the coaching and the who's better, Nurse or, or Spolstra, and all of that and, and what this means. But they actually have a pretty good pathway should they should they be able to get past this Miami Heat game? Well, I, I, it, let's let's face it; it's paramount mm -hmm. that you that you beat Miami. It you, is. You, you can't play Boston, and, and the way you need Joel to go, start to go through this whole thing, right? You can't all of a sudden start off with the Celtics. That they, 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 you can't do that. You got to win. You have to. Yeah, and, and again, just yes, you wanted the day off. You wanted the full week to to rest to give Joel and be that extra rest and uh, get his legs back underneath him, make sure he's good, whatever, with that knee, because that, that buckle did look worrisome when it did happen. Of course, he left the game at the end of the second quarter, did come back, and you saw there was even a fast break, if you remember, late yeah. in the fourth quarter, where he it's normally It's amazing sprints. how we hold our breath, man. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, it was like, Ooh. let it go. Don't even yeah, try. And, and he did. He let it go. He didn't even try to try to attack and, and try to block the shot. He just let the layup go. So that, mean, that tells you right there something was up. But a couple of days off. Yes, it's paramount that you do beat the Miami Heat, so you do avoid Boston. Should you be scared of Boston? Yes. If you have to play in a seven-game series, does anything help you from last season? Maybe. James Harden is no longer here, so you you know that's, that's still kind of up in the air because he had two tremendous games, plus a third that was very good that they won, so he had his hands in all three wins. Can they do that again in the series against Boston? I think most people would prefer to wait until we get to the Eastern Conference Finals to find that out. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, but let's talk about this matchup. And let's talk about Miami. And look, we know about Jimmy. And we know, like, listen, he's uh, they're vampires. I call them vampires because yeah, they always find a way. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned the coaching matchup. Sure. Nick Nurse wears a collar of garlic around his neck because he's the guy I think I, I feel so much better about going into a playoff season than they've ever had. They have not had a coach, an in-game coach of his caliber. Yeah, when you do look on the other side, though, the matchup was oh, closer in a one game. He's the man. Yeah, he, I guess he's, he's the best. He's he's the yeah. best coach in the NBA. But to your point, it's not Doc Rivers going up against. Him. No, it's not. No, it's not. And and Nick Nurse, uh, I was I was talking to our, our, our friend Pat Gallon on CBS three last night, and the one thing that I mentioned to him was that. He asked me a grade, and I gave it kind of an incomplete. I kind of copped out a little bit just because you lose Joel Embiid for 29 games, and then you have DeAnthony Melton down for so long. You make a trade for Robert Cummington, who seemingly was going to be a part of your rotation somehow, some way, because he wasn't always in it. But when he when he was there, there's the possibility of yeah. I can go to Robert Covington. He wasn't available. So with that and, and, and how you look at where they are right now, I, I kind of gave him an incomplete, but he is a coach that I – I like a lot. He is the one that we talked about uh, when the offseason came and went and Doc Rivers was let go. Nick Nurse was one of the guys that you, you focus on, you target it because you knew he was already removed from his duties with the Toronto Raptors. And now when you look at in-game situation against the Miami Heat, I do feel more comfortable that if he has to pull somebody like we've seen in the past. I know it was just the Washington Wizards. I'm just using it as an example. When he did pull Tobias Harris out of the game because he wasn't playing as well, and Ricky Council stepped in and had a double double, which kind of put him on the on the uh, you know radar for a lot of Sixer fans uh, of, of who he might be able to be and how he can help in any given game. But Doc Rivers will go with different lineups. He'll put Nick Batum at the five. We've seen KJ Martin playing at the five as well when they had to go small, just because he looked at situationally. 
this was what's best for us to win right now in this moment. So I do like Nick Nurse for that. And certainly if he does have him be back, that helps a lot with what he likes to I, do I mean, around. W- without a doubt. He, listen, you play Toronto, mm-hmm. right? He always added new wrinkles. He was always a guy that that threw something at you that surprised you. Sure. Like, and, and go back to the San Antonio game. Now, they didn't have anybody in that game. There's no one beating that game. He's throwing up plays that work. Yeah. Like that, wh- wh- when's the last time you, you went into a huddle, right? Like you hear, like when the camera goes in the huddle and you hear, hey, let's go, dude, play some defense, rebound. Yeah. Like, there's no answers yeah, in the I, huddle. I, I he, even, nurse gives you answers. I even like when he calls timeouts because you can tell when he's ticked off, right? Yeah. And, and Doc Rivers, you can tell when he was ticked off also, but it's something about Nurse that I do like. You talk about those two ATOs there that that he he called against San Antonio. The one wrinkle, of course, with Tyrese Maxey getting the, the, the layup to tie it up to force it into the first overtime. And that was just a great pass from Batum, uh, lofting it over the top. Tyrese Maxey catching it over like a wide receiver and laying it in. Great play. Then the other one where Nick Batum was out of bounds. I think it was the same game. Out of bounds on the left side of the floor on the sideline. He lost it all the way to the opposite side of the floor in front of the bench where he throws it to Kelly Oubre with uh, just less than about a second to to, uh, get a shot off and try to win the game at the buzzer. He missed it. But again, a great play call. So those are the things. And I'll even go back to that one in that game just once again where certain things were happening in that game. And Ricky Council plays the entire fourth quarter. He plays all of the first overtime and all of the second overtime. To your point, he will go to different lineups when he sees fit what's beneficial for them at that time. Yeah, I, I, I'm really bold. You know, like, I'm a big Ricky guy. Go get him Rick. You know, I, all I that know. stuff. So, yeah. No, I know you love Ricky. Yeah, I love Ricky. I know you yeah, love Ricky. Um, let's look at Miami for a second mm-hmm. and kind of get into the matchups. This team, they've been riddled with injuries. Um, you know, it, it's been kind of part of the story of their season. Right. Uh, how dangerous do you think they are? Now, we know about uh, Spolstra and we know about Butler. But how dangerous do you think Miami is? Playoff Jimmy is a real thing. I think we all have seen yeah. that all the way back to the bubble. We saw it in the Sixer uniform for the short time that he was here. And we saw it the last two seasons when they got to the NBA Finals yep. uh, when they should not have. Not the last two because Boston did mm-hmm. get to the one, but them pushing to the Eastern Conference Finals for two years in a row, one as a play-in team. But they are very dangerous. The acquisition of Terry Rozier at the trade deadline was big. We talked about him here, so we can't ignore it as if he's not that same player that you would potentially look at for your own no, basketball team. No, it's true team. offense. That, that, That's, they, they, they needed it. They needed it. They needed another guy to help out, especially with Tyler Hero. Yeah, being as, hurt. As far as yeah. the backcourt and the, and the perimeter game goes, being in and out of the lineup because of his injury, the up-and-down nature of Duncan Robinson and his shooting offensively and what he brings. But they are dangerous because of Rozier, because – you have seen where Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson can get hot at any given time. Caleb Martin in the playoffs last season was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, he was. Right? So all the things that you look at where he struggled against the Sixers, I remember one game here, the last game that the Sixers won here, where he got in foul trouble and he could not get into rhythm. But you know what he did in the second half when he settled down? He got hot and made that a closer game than it was supposed to be. So, yes, that can be a problem because they can turn it up. That zone, if the Sixers are not shooting the ball well, that zone can pose a problem. Bam out of bio, I'm not ignoring him, folks. I know he's there, but he struggles against Joel Embiid. He has his problems, like many do, against Joel Embiid. So those things there are, of course, we have to pay attention to all of them. Well, you brought the zone, and the zone was an issue back in the day. Like when you when you had Simmons, right, and you had a team that, that lacked a lot of perimeter shooting. The zone was an issue, but now like this team doesn't lack that. This team is different than the makeup before. So I, I don't put as much, I don't have as much fear in that zone as I did. Not as much fear. Again, the zone is the zone and they do their part. The defense does their part as the zone to make things difficult. But the Sixers also have to respond to it well. And the good part about having that, the response is when you go to Nick Batum putting him in the middle of the zone because, again, he's the decision maker that Nick Nurse trusts. Mm -hmm. Joel Embiid in the middle of that zone, right there at that free throw line. And sometimes you have Tobias Harris, Kelly Oubre in there, and you hope that they make the right decision. That's where the De'Anthony Melton part also comes in and hurts them because he is someone that you that's trustworthy 
at that free throw line in the middle of that zone. Yeah, he killed that you can it also against Boston. Make, make decisions there. I still I, he. Oh, I know he missed oh, three. He missed three three pointers. Uh, I know. I just kept, I know. listen. I know. You're spot on about him. Yeah, yeah. And it's great to have him back for this whole thing. Yes. yes. Yeah. But can I? You mentioned the name, and it elicits Boston, and it elicits Game Six. He has some good looks, folks. I get on James Harden. A couple of those passes were from James Harden yeah. to him where he was wide open. It's a different he game. He knocks out a down. couple of those shots. I, I totally agree. Not a different game. You're moving on to the Eastern Conference Finals. I do. It's not even dude, I, that's it. At that point, you're playing Miami. That's it. In the Eastern Conference Finals. But, yeah, man, you have to worry about the Miami Heat because of that. But with that being said, and I know we're going to talk about this later on today at 2.30, the Sixers should beat the Miami Heat. They, should, they are the better basketball team than the Miami Heat. Yes, it is worrisome that you're playing in an elimination game where you have, you cannot win the seven and you cannot play the New York Knicks. But you should beat the Miami Heat as tough as they are. You are the better basketball team, and they should not come into your home and, you're playing and win on your right floor now. after winning eight straight games yeah. to close the season out. Yeah. You've been playing playoff basketball for the last three weeks. Now... You do lose in playoff basketball, but they should beat the Miami Heat on Wednesday at home because they are better. All right, since we're just talking, mm -hmm. and I never like to kind of go too much ahead, but looking at a Knicks matchup, and we all, it's an obvious statement. You'd rather play New York than Boston. Looking at a Knicks matchup, I kind of like what I see there. Well, nah, first of all, it's fun. ridiculous, but. It, it would be unbelievable to go six years next in a, in a playoff series. That's fun. Yeah. That, that is fun. Look, you go into the playoffs unless you like the draw that you get. Even in this one, if you get New York, well, and you let's just go back. Of course, we don't want to bring up the bad memories, but you go back to 21 where it sets up perfectly Washington, Atlanta, and then you get to the Eastern Conference Finals. But even here, sometimes you have these tough matchups where – it's just fun basketball. Yeah. The theater, the yeah. storyline yeah. is tremendous. Yeah. And you have a, an Atlantic Division opponent. I hate the Knicks. Boston is number one, and then you have New York number two. But it's real. And to have New York basketball back and relevant, that's a great I will thing. Say, they're a distant two. Distant two. Yes. You know, like, Boston, Boston. Is, Boston is way ahead yeah, of Yeah, like yeah, Boston yeah. is. Yeah. Like there's a new, have you seen a commercial? There's the, uh, I love the Mayhem commercial, mm -hmm. and it's Larry Bird, mm -hmm. and there's a bird in the attic, yeah, and he's got to kill the bird <laughs> yeah, or shoot a bird in the attic. And I see Larry Bird's face, and I still, it still gets me just rankled. On. 100%. I still see it. I'm seething. 100%. We'll, hey, get, you know, we'll get to that in these conference finals. Why? Because the New York Knicks are tough, but once again, in a seven-game series, you should knock that team We off. have not been good at the same time. All forever. Yeah. Sixers and Knicks, it's interesting, have never really been good at the same time. Like, you go back in the day, the Knicks weren't any good. Mm -hmm. And then when they had their run with Riley and then later Van Gundy, yep. the Sixers were horrible. So there was never really that rivalry, even though the proximity was there, with the Knicks. And how ironic that a Philadelphia kid, sort of, Turns that franchise around the way that he he has. Wes. With the other two guys. Uh, also, well, Wes, I'm more speaking about Jalen Brunson. Oh, yeah. And then you go with Dante and, and Josh oh, and, and what God. they're doing. So, yeah, that team that team is well, fun. Well, Jalen's Jalen turning into a, uh, An all a true NBA superstar. Guard. Yeah. Like a true superstar. Yes. Like when he was in Dallas. And I didn't see it. No, when he was in Dallas, and I was like, wow, man, he's playing good ball, right? I'm thinking, man, they gave a lot. They, when the Knicks gave him that contract, I'm thinking that's a big contract. I was upset because he left because I felt like he was in a really good situation yeah. playing with Luka. Yeah. And I was like, all right, maybe he can be a two because Luka is so good. Right. Jalen can be the two and you can just surround them with other things. But when you look at where they are right now, he made the right decision. He he's going to be an all-NBA guard. Ridiculous. He's going to get a yeah. new contract where it's going to be – outrageous yeah. because he's going to get a max uh, deal true super, and, yeah. and I'm happy for him. Yeah. That said, yeah, he's going to go off. You have to worry about the shooting of DiVincenzo and others on that team. The hustle that we talk about with Hart and Hartenstein with what they do because they don't any loose ball they believe is theirs and you have to take it from them. 
The Julius Randle part, though, I'm not going to ignore and act like he was not the second best nah, player on that Julius team. Julius Randle killed him. And Ananobi, it, it just Ananobi though they're like twenty and three since he's yeah, arrived. So yeah. that that that's a no, that's but he's, a real he, he thing. got hurt. I mean, you yeah, know. but he's back. Yeah, so he, that's there. But then you go to well, the other you side, Randall and Ananobi and Brunson. Come on, right now you go. Yeah, now, now, now we're not celebrating. Randall will drive you nuts, but he was still a twenty plus point scorer. Can rebound, can score buckets. And he just gives you a problems. Yes. Yeah. So he's a matchup problem. Yeah, he's a, he is a matchup problem. So we can't ignore that. That said, that's going to be a fun series. It's going to go probably seven. But if you're the Sixers, you want to take that out in six so you can win on your home floor and don't have to worry about going to the garden. It's going to be infuriating if we get there. If because the Nick fans travel. Oh, yeah. It's going to be crazy here in, in, in Philly at the center. And you hope that oh, the Sixers awesome. represent, the fans represent. Yeah, New York it'll, it'll be great. Like, if great they get past theater, Miami, dude. it's like, going to yeah, be great. I, yeah, it's, it's going to be great, man. That's going to be great. I, so New York in the first round, do what you do against Milwaukee or Indiana playoffs, second, and then Boston man, in, the, in the Eastern Conference Finals. How, I mean, how perfect I mean, would that be? I have to say this, a couple of things. One, yeah. the play, they got it right with the playing game. They, like I love what they did at the end of the weekend, which is, you know, everybody's off Saturday. They all play Sunday. It's like the Loaded NFL. Up. It yeah. was like the NFL. Right. They did a great job there. I love the play-in. Uh, the, the playoffs are amazing theater. The the fact of how it kind of goes into it. Sure. Yeah. It's it's great basketball. I'm looking forward to it. Like I, I like all the matchups. Yeah, there's some really good matchups. OKC okay, so getting the number one seed. Yeah, Dallas and the Clippers that's at four or five. Great, that's a great series. Yeah, and that could also tell the story too. If Dallas knocks out LA in the first round. The whole Paul George thing has been out there. Kyle Newbeck reported it a couple of, like, the two months ago. He and Derek talked about yeah. it where they reported it and everyone else, you know, kind of added on to it since then that the Paul George thing might be real for Philadelphia. So if they lose early, how inclined is Steve Barmer, who already so hasn't paid Paul to, George, to let him leave? Yes. So yeah. I, I do a show on Fox Sports Radio. Yes, you do. And, uh, in fact, I was talking to the guys out there, and they're based in L.A., and there's all, all the talk is Paul George to the Sixers. Like, they're all... It's no longer hey, a secret. Right. And they, remember, and they're, and they're bemoaning the fact that, wow, like, Paul George and, and Kawhi Leonard come here together, and now... Guess what? They still haven't won. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they did come there together. It was so interesting. They still haven't won. That no. was six years ago. And then you had Harden, and... Yeah. Uh, but it's so it's such a, a great like the matchups are so good. Sacramento Golden State play in. Can you imagine? Insane. How about Phoenix winning seven of their last ten when they look like they were for sure a play in team, and they wound up uh, with I think it's the fifth seed. Yeah, that they have yeah. So, Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, I Minnesota, love Minnesota dropping the three where yeah. you know those three way tie. Denver number two. I, I love Minnesota too. Yeah. And I'm a big Anthony Edwards guy, so we'll see. Yeah, me the, too. We'll see what they do. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, man. How how, uh, how about Milwaukee? Were you now? Were you surprised? So Milwaukee gives up yesterday, so they tank yesterday. Mm -hmm. Why would the Knicks? Why wouldn't the Knicks? Why did the Knicks go after it? I, I just think it was just more of not worrying about what anybody else is doing. We believe in ourselves. So if you're saying that Doc Rivers in the Milwaukee Bucks tanked to get that, Did, that it, third. What, well, I, what, I was what at the game, like? so I didn't see it. I yeah, was just yeah. watching the scoreboard. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I did ask a lot of you know a lot of people that. So you're saying, it. And, and my thing is uh, this. that's where the first thing. I mean, they didn't but play. that's the mentality. Yeah, New York is not dodging anybody. Yeah, if Milwaukee is doing that, then they're already setting themselves yeah. up. Whether it's a tight. Tightly contested series against Indiana, who played them well this season. I think they beat them and four or five, or yeah, three or four. Yeah, yeah, yeah because also yeah, yeah, going into the playing and all that stuff. But uh, for them, you're you're dodging the Philadelphia 76ers or the Miami Heat potentially. You're doing that. Where my to your point, New York, New York. Why didn't they? Because they're not afraid. Tom Thibodeau, Jalen Brunson, and the rest of that yeah, team. They, they're not afraid. Tibbs, They'll take the matchup, Tibbs, whatever's Tibbs, in front is of that, them. That's not their mo. Right? Yeah. So. So, sure, but sometimes you make a business decision yeah. to, to, to make it a smart decision for yourself, but you you dodge one there. And I, I, I like the mentality of what New York did versus what, as you're saying, uh, Milwaukee probably did. Yeah. I mean, again, I just, that's the first thing you thought. Like, yeah. Why you, you yeah. Come on. Uh, who is 
who plays a role, a bigger role than expected for the Sixers going into this post? Like, and, and listen, the matchups change yeah. everything. Let's just talk about Miami. Who plays a bigger role? You, know, you obviously know Joel and, and Maxie. Maxie. Right. So, but who plays the, who's the third man in? Does Ubre count? Yeah, yeah. Well, Ubre it is then, because when we mentioned it last week, just jokingly talking about it on the show, that Kelly Ubre is the third best player on the team because Tobias Harris is kind of taking a little fall back where Ubre well, has been playing Ubre, so good. Ubre does what Ty, with with Harris, with Tobias does, but he's fearless. Yes, you. That's what you want in the Tobias Harris uh, body. So I'm going with Ubre because he has been playing. Man, I looked at the numbers and we read these numbers out from. Uh, what he has done from February to March and now in April, his numbers have been really good. His passing has been much better. His defense has been so much better where you feel comfortable putting him on one of the better perimeter scorers on the other side where that's his assignment, and he's at least holding his own and doing well. And I give Tobias Harris credit when he plays defense well, like he did against yeah. Jason Tatum in yeah. the series last, yeah. last playoffs. So I I'm going Kelly Oubre because – Right now, he is the X factor. If you get good Kelly Oubre, you're most likely winning that basketball game because you're going to get what you always get from Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. Oubre now giving you anywhere between 15 and 20 points and then elevating that to maybe 24, then I'm, I'm choosing Kelly Oubre as the X factor here. And who would have thought a minimum league minimum guy? Yes, he's a 24 scorer in his league, and we know that. He can do that in his sleep. But who would have thought that we're talking about a, a, a league minimum well, guy right now being your third best player, and partly also because De'Anthony Melton's, pro you know, probably out. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I think you can develop guys. Well, I think nowadays development matters more. I think you, it, it always felt like there was a ceiling. Like, you knew what, what every player's kind of ceiling is. Yeah. And the, we brought up Br Jalen Brunson earlier. Like, now I think you – you could actually develop a player and to get him into another level. Yes. Yes, you can. But again, talking about an eight year veteran. No, I know. And, I know. and he is the same player, but it's, it's situational. And yeah. maybe something just clicked differently playing on Charlotte for the last couple of seasons, playing yeah, for well, nothing. I mean, like, by the way, you're on a bad team. Mm -hmm. You're on a team that plays no defense. Playing for nothing. You know yeah. you're going to lose. Yeah. And now you come into a situation where you're on a contender. You didn't sign that contract until what, August? Yes. September? Yes. And here you find yourself, you knew you would be in a playoff mix, but no one knew there was going to be a play in situation. That being said, he's playing a key role here where he's a starter, where you have everybody back but Melton when you talk about rotational players. And Nick Nurse has a decision to make of do you start Kelly Oubre or Nick Batum? He's going Kelly Oubre. Of course. And and he's doing that. But I thought it would be Batum because of this, the, the chemistry and the synergy that you have with Joel Embiid and, and, and the, the passing and the simple things, you know, all the basic things that Nick Batum does to help you win basketball games. He's going Kelly Oubre. And guess what? He's the coach. That's the right call. And that's why when you look at the development and all, Kelly Oubre is no different than he has been. He's just engaged more. He's doing more that's meaningful for winning basketball. One last, one last guy I want to bring up. Yeah. Because I'm a Buddy healed man, right? Sure. Now, what do we expect? Now, we saw when he first got here, like, he was terrific. First five games, he was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Then slump. Then B comes back. And he had, last week, he had that one game that really kind of, like, Matt, that's kind of what was in my mind when I was thinking about Buddy and how he would fit in. I think he had five threes in that game. Yes. Yeah. So... What can we expect legitimately from Buddy? Because I think he's a like he's why I get excited because he's another one that puts to me the ceiling higher. I think it's two ways. If he's hitting his shots, he's playing. If he's not hitting his shots, he's not playing. Now, he's gonna get the minutes to find out if he can hit those shots. But if he's not making those shots, Nick Nurse has already shown that he will go in yeah. another direction if that's not working. Where is that direction? Because the playoff. Rotation shortens, it shrinks. I don't know because now with Melton out, how is campaign in the mix where he gets a few more minutes? That's your man, campaign. Because, yeah, and that's the Phoenix thing. And of course, with Kale, him and Kale still tight yeah. and all that. But um, that that's a whole different thing because if he's making his shots, Buddy Hill's going to stay in the game. 
if he's not making his shots, that's 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 you already know where it's going. Well, you know, yesterday he got hot. Yeah. He in that third quarter, he yeah. had like three threes to close out the quarter. And that's what but you're talking Embiid, about. But we still haven't seen it I with know. Embiid, and that's what we were the waiting for. The one game. The one, the one game. game. Yeah, yeah just and, one. and that's what I, like, that's, you know, I, I keep looking at the space. Sure. There's going to be space. And how great is it that we go into a playoff, and it's not like you're sweating cork moss. <laughs> like, dude, cork moss. Like, yeah. oh, my God. Like, who's going to hit shots? He court boss would get run. Yeah, he would. Yeah, he would. But now you're worried. All right. Campaign is maybe not on that level of cork miles, but I know a lot of people don't want to see. No, but he's you know. a legitimate playmaker. I mean, sure. You know, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, he can't do things. No, they have guys like Buddy Heald is my only point. Right. Right, that guy But he has ball. to make the shots. He has to He has to be guarded in order to make him, uh, uh, Nick Nurse, yeah. keep him on the floor and also – Lay off a little bit more of Maxi and Embiid for that without tour. without a doubt, brother. Yep. Oh, dude, oh, we're gonna do this a lot, man. This is fun. Uh, we better be doing this a lot. This better this carry, better be a run. This better carry through yes. late May. Exactly. Yes. It yeah, better yeah. carry through late exactly. May. Exactly. Yeah. The great Devon Thank Givens. You, what time? Two thirty. Two thirty this uh, afternoon. We'll be with you two thirty this. I'll afternoon. be there. Make sure you're there. Two thirty. All P H L Y Sixers. Yes, sir. the great Devon Givens.